This episode of The Honeydew is brought to you by Liquid IV and Keeps. More on that later. Let's get into the do. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I am Ryan Sickler, Ryan Sickler on all social media, ryansickler.com. And I want to say thank you to every one of you for subscribing, for the messages, the emails, all of it. This community is growing, and I absolutely love your fucking metal. I love it. I love that you all are over here just laughing at the shit thrown at us. It's a good time. Uh, it's the best therapy, and I'm so glad you're on board. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, and uh, you'll get audio every Monday, video on Tuesdays. And if you got to have more episodes, subscribe to the Patreon. Uh, it's five bucks a month. If you sign up for your year, you get over a month of free episodes. And that community is just, man, the fucking stories that are coming out of that show. You Just go look. Go look at the promos on my IG. It's nuts. Cast a line out to all y'all and... Y'all haven't let me down. If you or someone you know has that story that has to be heard, please submit it to honeydewpodcast at gmail.com. Hopefully we get to do an episode with you. You do not need to be a Patreon member. Uh, so submit it. Hopefully we get the chance to do an episode together. Now, you know we record here at the Santa Monica Music Center. Um, and working with this... Uh, with the <laughs> oh, I guess this making me laugh. Working with these kids right now on Outreach Through the Arts. Uh, 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 non uh, At-risk kids with the Santa Monica Police Department. And, uh, you know, we're teaching them how to podcast, editing cameras, everything that goes into bringing a show like this out there. And I, I got to tell you, they're loving it. We're loving it. So I'll keep you up to date on that. We had the chief of police, Santa Monica police in here. Uh, she was in here. Black lady, by the way. What? That lady, yeah, setting. She's over there making history. So she was in here. They're excited about the program. I'm excited about it. Just something I want to tell you all about. How many of these kids do you think are going to flip it into an OnlyFans? <laughs> We haven't taught them about that yet. Oh, they'll We're figure only it out. three classes deep. <laughs> <laughs> so, real quick, uh, you know what we do here? We highlight the low lights. Uh, these and are the stories. Apparently, you're highlighting a low light. <laughs> <laughs> these are the stories behind the storytellers. And as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, our guest this week, Russell Peters, y'all. Hey, hey honey, look at that! Russell. I got the clap from you. Thank you for being here, brother. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. It's good what you're doing to these kids. I'll, or for these kids, no, rather. Thank you. Well said. <laughs> yeah, you got to yeah. say, the words are very important. <laughs> yeah. Doing four and doing two, two are very are different very things. Very different. Yeah, things. doing four is what you're doing, and doing two is what the Catholic Church does. That's right. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Why I left the Catholic Church. <laughs> Me too. Uh, before we get into uh, your life, your stories, please promote everything and anything. You have a new podcast new coming podcast, out. New podcast, Culturally Canceled on uh, iHeartRadio. Uh, it's just a hang, basically. We, hang, we do it in my backyard. We sit around, we drink, we smoke cigars, we talk shit, and it's, uh, you know, we've had all kinds of different... I like to put three people on at a time just to fuck up the energy in the no. room. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like, so, you know, like, who did I have? I think I had, uh, uh, I had Kango Kid from UTFO. Okay. Smooth B from Nice and Smooth. Uh, Lord Finesse and myself was like, I think the very first one we did. We just sat around and talked about hip hop. And then, uh, so you you are an old hip hop head. Oh yeah, you yeah, go yeah. way yeah, deep yeah, yeah. on that. Then we had one with uh, Cedric the Entertainer, and uh, oh, I had Sean Porter, Showtime Sean Porter on yeah. with me on that one. And then Sean's dad, Kenny Porter, was there. And I think Ruben Paul dropped in. It was just, it's just loose. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's hang like it's really kind of like if you were to wonder what what happens in my backyard and we're sitting around and talking, that's basically we're recording it now. All right, and what's where is it again? iHeart? iHeart Radio. All right. Culturally canceled with Russell Peters. Any uh any live performance dates at this point right now? Yeah, I don't want to brag, guys, but I got a bunch of dates. They're on my website, russellpeters.com. All right. Um I don't know when this is gonna air, so uh in a couple weeks. A April's gonna get canceled. Yeah. I know that. <laughs> because uh you want to wait till after yeah, April? Yeah, April? No, well, April the uh, sh dates are getting canceled. I got to do, but I got to do something in Canada. So, but after that, revisit. Um. Well, again, thank you for being here. I told you uh, what we do over here. At the end, by the way, I forgot to tell you, you're a first time guest. After we talk about what we're going to talk about, I'm going to ask you what advice you would give your 16 year old self. All right. Oof, yeah. So <laughs> let's start. Ta tell me, give me your yours is a life story. Mine's a life story. I got Please. a lot of years on me. 
Uh, what do you want to start with? Where do you want to start? Well, you're born <clears throat> Toronto. Born in Toronto in 1970. Um, and are you an only child? No, I have an older brother. He's six years older than me. Okay. So from the age, and my parents, we were latchkey kids. So from you know, from the time I, I was born, my mom and dad both worked, and they both they weren't professionals. You know what I mean? My I dad, heard somebody the other day use latchkey, and they were like, "Yeah, my mom would pick me up." I'm like, "Whoa, what?" Yeah, yeah. Ain't no pickup. You get your fucking self we, we home not, with yeah. your own key, yeah, and you go not, in the yeah, house and you're responsible if you got for your picked up, you, self. You, if, I was a latchkey kid. Yeah, yeah, nobody yeah, was no picking fuck, us nobody up. Matter of fact, up. they rode right the fuck by while we were walking home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My brother, my brother, and I would take the bus. I was four. He was ten. Damn. We, we we would get on the bus together. Public transit, not not. Um, Can you imagine if somebody put their four year old on a public uh, bus in oh Toronto right now? Oh my god, you'd be now? fucking. You'd, you'd lose your kids. You today. would. You would lose your kids. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's a weird world we're living in now. And I don't remember anything happening to kids back then. I don't remember that no many close kids getting... calls with you or your brother. No, nobody wanted a brown kid. We're low. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're low on the totem yeah, pole. You'll be stuck with them. Fuck, am I gonna, how, how am I gonna <laughs> hide this one? They'll be stuck with you. <laughs> Uh, is that your kid? That's my pet monkey. It just throws me a banana. <laughs> oh, shit. So, yeah, you know, for age of four, I, I, my brother and I would take that. He would take me to school. We went, were in the same school back then. And then we would stop on the way home and get a jumbo burger. It was called Jumbo Burgers. We'd stop there. And then we'd have to walk because it was just far enough from the house where a bus, waiting for the bus wouldn't make sense. Right. And uh, But still far enough where you're like, fuck, I got to do this yeah. walk now. That's a lot on a 10-year-old, too. It's I'm a lot four. of responsibility. Yeah, my, my, my brother's always yeah. been very responsible. So that was good. That worked out well because if it was me and him, we would have been fucked. And did, that, did you grow closer because of it? Or did yeah, you- he's my manager now. Still, so you're still good to go. Oh, we're then. still good, yeah. No shit. Matter of fact, we FaceTimed each other today. Me, him, and my mom staying in my house right now. So that's nice. It was nice, little three of us yeah. on the FaceTime. That's good. So you you grow up like that. Now, what what sort of student are you? Terrible. I'm a terrible, terrible. student. So Why? we moved from Toronto. Okay. In 1974 or five, 74, 70, 75, we moved from Toronto to Brampton, which is the 20 minutes outside of the city, and uh, it's a working class blue collar town. And uh, what did your parents do? My dad worked in a chicken factory when we moved to Brampton. Otherwise, he worked in a, a slaughterhouse in Toronto. So no, so he was killing something. It was, he, was he worked killing. in a beef slaughterhouse, and he was a meat inspector. And then so then he worked. We moved to Brampton, where my dad worked at the chicken plant. We did the same shit with chickens. And my mom worked. Uh, my mom ended up working at Kmart. Y'all had Kmart in Canada. Yeah, I don't. Know. I didn't know they yeah, were yeah, international. Yeah, yeah right. they're everywhere. Yeah. The only thing that's not international is fucking IHOP. <laughs> Ironically, I mean, <laughs> fucking false ass advertising. That's the fucking truth. <laughs> oh shit! And uh, what's it like growing up in a town like that? Were you guys middle class, lower no, middle we were, class, we were low work, income, work, work, working, working class? class. Yeah, okay. yeah, working class. Like there was no extras. Mm-hmm. You had what you needed. That was you wrong. didn't have yes. no extras. Well said. Yeah, you know what I mean. It was mm-hmm. like yeah, I had shoes. I might have been falling apart, but you had fucking shoes. Yeah. And if they did fall apart, then you would get new shoes, you know. Uh, and so this neighborhood we grew, uh, we moved to was a little townhouse complex, and very racist, very, very racist, very white racist. Uh, well, in Canada in the seventies, it was very, a lot of racism towards Indian people. Um, black people were getting it, but not anywhere near what we were getting. Really? Like we were below everything, because yeah, we were easy targets. We're small. We're you know, they have funny accents. I didn't have one, obviously, but, and I couldn't figure out what the fuck was happening. They would call us packies. Okay. Um, and and this took, is like, this is the first, this is what you're seeing at four, five, six years yeah, old. Yeah. I, and I don't understand what's happening. Right. I'm four and a half, five years old. I'm like, is your brother is fighting or anything like well, that? Well, my brother, my brother's kind of figure it out. He's like, he's 11 now. He's like, I don't know what the fuck's going on either. So, um, we moved to this townhouse complex and, Literally, I, you know, I'm a five-year-old kid. I go to the park. I don't know. I take a piss in the park. You know what I mean? I, I peed on them. I still the, do that. Yeah. And they were like, fucking fine with you, you fucking packy. And there's grown people talking to me like this. Oh, really? These are adults? These are adults oh, doing shit. this. These aren't kids. These are adults. To a little them. five-year-old they kid? They don't give a shit. I was a cute fucking kid, too, to be honest I bet with you. I you were. I, but, and, and I, I, but I didn't know I was cute because so many people shit on you for so long. You don't know anything good about yourself at that point. So I, I dealt with a lot of that. And as you got older, it got worse. Like the, you know, because it, because you, you kind of got beaten down at a young age. Your brain goes, oh, you have no, you have no recourse in this. You're just gonna have to take this. You know what I mean? So, can I ask you a question? Because yeah. obviously, I'm, I've never had 
uh, consistent racism, uh, you know, because used your, against because me because privilege. I'm white yes. and my privilege. <laughs> um, but, you know, do you get to a point, and I don't want to say because p- that you get used to it, but you said you accept you accepted it. You actually yeah. were like, I, you weren't going to fight back, or no, you just knew could, that no matter what you did, it didn't matter. No, this if you shit fought back, here. you were going to get beat up worse. You were because you were getting beat up for no reason. Like you would go to the park. Eventually, after having a good time with the other kids, somebody would either spit on you or punch spit. you in the head. Fuck. Kick How you, old whatever. are you? The first time you had any kind of physical well, altercation. I, the Right when we moved into the townhouse complex, I'm riding my bicycle in the neighborhood, and I get down the street to the stop sign. There's an older white man watering his lawn. I'm a five-year-old kid. I stop at the stop sign. I don't know why. Five. Because when you're a kid on a bike, you want to pretend you're driving a car. So you see a stop sign, you stop. And uh, this white man's watering his lawn. I go, hi. And he sprays me with his hose. Get the fuck out of here, Packy. Damn. Yeah. Grown man. Cut to, that was 1975, cut to 1984, 85. So wait, sorry, your first was, sort of- it was Not a, my first, it was an, he was, but he was definitely like one of the memorable But that's an adult, ones. that's not a kid that's your what, age. Yeah, that was that was the that one where I was like, out. oh, that motherfucker. Uh-huh. Okay, I see who you are. Anyway, cut to like 10 years later. Um, I don't live in that townhouse I'm anyway. skidding all in your yard later, motherfucker. Oh yeah, it's even better. So I, <laughs> I, 10 years later, my friends lived in the, in the buildings behind, there was like, across the street was like these- apartment building so my my friends still live there so and we had moved so but you still have to walk through my old townhouse to get to my where i had moved to so i'm walking home one night from my friend's place me and him he's walking back with me and uh that guy's house was on the corner and i well, as you're walking by i go look at that motherfucker sitting in his living room and he had a big window i picked up a brick i threw that shit right Did through you? his fucking window and we <laughs> took off motherfucker <laughs> and that's funny because i saw his wife maybe uh Lawn looks good, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, you threw a brick. Man, fuck that guy. They didn't call the police or anything like I that? I don't know or? what they did. We were gone. <laughs> we done whatever they wanted to do, but I don't know. I was gone. You saw his wife? You were I saying? saw his wife um, in the mall in the, that I grew like in the hometown that I grew up in. Now, maybe I saw her maybe like, I want to say like 14 years ago. And I was like, I was with my mom, and I go, oh, look at this fucking bitch is still here. <laughs> and my mom goes, Russell, stop that. I go... No, you know who her fucking dirty husband was. <laughs> I love that you hold that grudge. Oh yeah, because that was grown. Yeah. He was a grown ass man. Fuck yeah. Yeah. God damn. Anyway. So when at what age do you start to develop the comedy muscle that is probably protecting well, I think, you from I think getting at, your ass beat? At that age is when right I started then. doing it because I was like, I think I've always been innately a happy person. It's like it's something you you're born with. Either you are or you're not. Yeah. And uh, you know people can try and fuck with it. And they can. And they do. And they do. But you can't take it away. You can, you know, stifle it a little bit, but that's about it. But I used to use comedy to get out of situations. And, you know, and then from from the age of four, all the kids I associated with were the black kids. Because okay. they were the ones not doing anything to me. They were the ones, we were literally equals. We were just, it wasn't even like, oh, he's black, let me talk to him. It just like, didn't occur to me. I was like, hey, these guys don't bully me. I'm going to go hang out with them. And then we would end up doing dumb shit together and. Well, I, as I'm guessing, I mean, skin color wasn't a thing for you. You knew it was the way you were being treated, but for you, you didn't give a shit who anyone looked like. Right. It didn't. I didn't. It didn't occur to me. Right. Because, uh, but it's funny because I remember I didn't know what a fucking packy was when I would hear it. They go, "Fucking packy's coming," like, and and I would run with them, like I'd run into the park like "fucking packy," and they'd all run, and I'd and I'd run too, and they think I'm chasing them, and I'm like, I don't want the fucking packy to get me either. I thought, I thought it was like a ghost. <laughs> And I came home and go, Mom, what's a fucking, what's a Paki? And my mom goes, we're not from Pakistan, we're from India. <laughs> Tell them that. I go, I'm not. They don't give yeah. a fuck. I'm like, I'm not going to correct them. That's not going to be the Listen, win. let me correct your racism so yeah. you can do it properly. If you're going to insult yeah. me, do it properly. Be accurate. <laughs> Please be accurate with your racism. Yeah, that's, and that's probably why, that's probably why I do this, the comedy that I do. Because I, I'm, when I do talk about specific races or cultures or nationalities i'm very specific with it and i think that comes from people doing broad stroke racism on me i was like listen i want this to be right yeah well i'm watching you out here with lana with yeah. knowing everything she's talking about these these countries dialects languages yeah okay so do you remember having conversations other than that with your mom and dad about this you know maybe their experiences of racism well my dad racism isn't new no see my mom's very fair-skinned 
she could pass. She's not much darker than you. If she not, is Indian. Yeah, she's from India, born and raised. Not much darker than not me. much darker. She just looks like me, but but fair skin. I'll show okay. you a picture just so you get an idea. Um, I just posted it on my Instagram too. As a matter of fact, let's go to that picture. Let's let's go to the tape, kids. Um, <laughs> okay, so that's mom. That's her with a tan. Oh yeah. Okay. Right. Uh huh. It just looks like me if you really look at it. Watch. <laughs> I had to zoom in. You gotta oh, zoom wait. in. It's on Instagram, so you gotta use two fingers. Hey, right. use two fingers oh, wait, on. Well, use two fingers on my two mom. Two fingers on you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I got two fingers on your mom, bro. <laughs> and then my dad was a little bit darker. Oh, you know. Yeah, for sure. So anyway, um, yeah, my dad dealt with that shit too. So. But when so when he moved to Canada, my dad my dad was an English major, so he always wanted to be a writer. Is what what took them to Canada? An airplane. Um, <laughs> they uh, <laughs> they wanted to get out of India because the type of Indian we are, we're Anglo Indians, we're mixed, like and we're mixed with British and the and Anglo Indians um, marry. Please used, educate us. A, on Anglo this. Indians used to marry Anglo Indians because they were the same mix. So there's some very famous Anglo Indians. And the Indians. mix is British, Indian. British and Indian. The, the father had to have been British. The mother had to have been Indian. Okay. And if the mother was uh, uh, British and the father was Indian, that's a Eurasian. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, All but right. the Eurasians didn't have much um, of the cultural shit happen. The Anglo Indians were born and raised in India, but their first language is English, and all of their cultural things are British. So growing up, I, when I'd go to India, everybody spoke English because all my family spoke English. Mm -hmm. And at four o'clock, it was tea time. Okay. And they would want snacks like scones and shit like that. You know what I mean? Um, so that's what I knew. And we did Indian food, obviously, because that's the food around. And then they learn whatever language they need to learn for where they live. So my mom grew up in Calcutta. She learned how to speak Bengali because that's where she was born and raised. But for English was still her first language. My dad was born and raised in, well, not raised, but he was born in Bombay. And so he learned how to speak the language there, which is Marathi, and he spoke that. He knew how to speak. He did. He knew how to speak it. And they both knew how to speak Hindi, which is the national language. But English was their first language. And even when they would speak the other languages, they still weren't that good at but it. But they could communicate. Yeah, they could communicate. They could do understand you, do it. Do you speak more than one language? No I, no. I I fake it through every language. But I can make you think I can speak your fucking language. Like, I know enough of each language where, where I make you go, I don't think we should speak it around <laughs> Let's get, let's, He's going to figure it out. Outside. He's going to figure yeah. this out. <laughs> that's all I want to do is make you uncomfortable. Yeah, that's great. Huh? Huh? You comfortable with your language? Well, I know what part of the words were. That's now, all you need to do to throw people off. What about extended family? Do you have grandparents or anyone that's, that's over here? No, or just no, no. Your no. My, 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 my dad, shit, if my dad was alive, he'd be 96. So, so no. <laughs> yeah. yeah they, so be, how old was he when he had you then? He was 45 when he 45, had you. 45, okay, a little older. Yeah. yeah, he was 45. So... Me and my brother took after him because I had my first kid at 40. Yeah. And my too. second one at 49. 49 is the second one? Yeah. I do what I got to do. How too. do your knees feel? How's your back and your knees? Um, That's what always hurts my Well, he's head. 48. And I was 48 and a half. Going to be 49. Um, no, my, my I do jujitsu, so my back is fine. Knees are fine. My feet hurt. It's a little yeah. weird, but it's my own issue. So <laughs> take me through just now high school. What is high school like? Okay. For you? So. You know, that's 1975. We go through grade school. I'm in Catholic school for nine years. Oh, you are? Senior okay. senior All kindergarten right. to eighth grade. Damn. They have okay. a senior kindergarten in Canada. They have junior kindergarten to senior kindergarten. Two kindergarten years? Yeah, so it's basically, uh, what's the first one you do here before kindergarten? TK, pre they call it. Pre-K pre pre or, or... Yeah, pre-K. Yes, so pre-K yes. and so, you know, same shit, different name. And the, you guys say eighth grade and we say grade eight. It's the same, okay. same shit. It's the same way... Uh, Lana's family, the West Indian Indian people, will say curry chicken, and Indians will say chicken curry. Oh, okay. Yeah. I That's how that. we know the distinction. By the way they say, like, oh, they're one of those. Okay. <laughs> oh, you were <laughs> that. I got you. Okay. <laughs> chicken so, curry? Yeah. Hide your wallet. Yeah. Do you want curry chicken? Uh, motherfucker, I know what you're doing. Um, and their curry is a different color. So we're like, that's how Indian people are looking to go. Wrong color. Don't know what you've done here, but um, it tastes good. Anyway, side note. Okay, so I get through, I get through nine years of Catholic school. Um, a lot of I deal with a lot of things during that time. 
Um, like what? Just a lot of racism and just getting beaten. even from the priest and shit like that. Did you ever get any of that? No, but even at a young age, I knew it was an atheist because I would go to church and I was like, this doesn't make sense. And Thank you. You. <clears throat> you weren't allowed to ask questions. And that made me even more. I'm like, well, if I can't ask questions, then how the fuck do you go? If you can't give me an answer, you're supposed to believe. No, motherfucker, I do not. Yeah. I need. And if God's everywhere, why do I got to be here Sunday? Yeah, yeah. Day, why, day, why does yeah. God need my, my fucking money? Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and why isn't God stopping you from fucking that kid over there? <laughs> And that one, and that, and that one, one yeah. and that one, and I kind of felt one. bad because they never fucked me. I was like, hey, I was, a, I was a cute, undesirable. I was a very cute that. fucking kid. I don't they know what their the problem brown was. Kid. You said it. They didn't want the brown one. Yeah, they wanted the brown stain, just not the brown kid. Um, this is one of my favorite memes. If you want to share that, you can. <laughs> Good things come in small packages. Oh my god. Uh, Oh shit! I, I assume you've seen. Um, oh, now I can't even think of the documentary with the whole the nun, the Baltimore documentary. I can't. I'm embarrassed. I can't think of it. Uh, the nuns with the whole priest that exposed the Catholic Church oh, not no, just I, having I, I sex with that. boys, but but children. There's so many girls. What the fuck's it called? Uh, the fuck a boy documentary. I don't know. What <laughs> it's not just boys. That's the thing. It's, oh wow, they were fucking girls. They were, were fucking they? children. Yes. I know that's weird. Though. Yes, children. I don't know why. Didn't f- matter what. I don't understand that fucking obsession. As a father, you go, what the fuck is wrong with you? You have kids. Yeah, I have a six year old daughter. Yes, you and, get it. Yeah, I totally. You look get at them, it. you go. I, I got it before I had a kid. Though. Yeah, me too. I've always <laughs> been know, into I, mature porn w- women. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it just came to me. <clears throat> the keepers. <laughs> The Keepers. Keepers. Okay. Just came to me. Where is it? Netflix. Okay. And it's great. And you absolutely need to watch it. It is it is eye-opening. And I know some people in it. Uh, my mother's what connected do you mean? some people in it. A friend of mine's mom went to that school and knew this teacher. So they murdered this nun because she was going to out them. And they fucking wiped her ass out. Right. And then they start talking to all these people that have real evidence. Like... The grave digger that had the priest come to him and say, bury my porn here. Well, he dug it up for him. And it's just stacks and pictures of kitties. Kid- yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. That's so much proof. And Literally. they all walk scot-free. And they show you how they just moved them, not across the country, like from this parish to this one, five blocks down the street. Yeah. So I'm you know, with this, you on this, it. this happened to me last year. Um, uh, it was the daddy-daughter dance at my daughter's school. And so the fathers, <clears throat> we take all, a bunch of the fathers, like 12 of us, will take our daughters to dinner on like a good date, you know, so mm-hmm. the, and the daughters will sit at one table, the fathers will sit at another table. So I get, I get there maybe about 15 minutes late, which is at my ammo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's one seat left at the table for me right here. And at the head of the table is the priest from the school. Oh no. <laughs> and I sit down and I go, this is going to be fun. <laughs> and. So we're having dinner, and and uh, the the guy sitting across from me is like a real kiss ass guy. So he starts saying, "You know, Father, I uh, I got away from the church, but uh, when I started coming back around, you know, I realized how much I'm like." And I'm like, "This motherfucker right here." I'm just thinking, I'm drinking too, so I'm like, I'm looking around. I'm like, and I'm elbowing the guy beside me. Like, oh, this motherfucker right here, and then. And then he's like, you know, and it was, you know, that I remember when I was in school, the nuns were so mean and they used to hit us and, and uh, they were really mean. And then the, and then the priest goes, yeah, the Catholic church, the church has changed. The church has changed a lot ago. Yeah. Now they just fuck kids. <laughs> you <son of> a- <laughs> yeah. and, and the priest goes. <laughs> Could you imagine being one of the good Catholic priests everywhere you go? Yeah. You got to hear him. You ain't ever not going to hear and, about and it. And that priest recognized me, obviously, <laughs> but because because about six months earlier, I think it was six months earlier, maybe six months to a year before that, my ex-wife wanted my daughter to get baptized because she wasn't baptized. And I didn't want to go. And she was like, you have to go. They won't do it if your father's not there. I go, well, what if the father's fucking dead? What do you do then? Dig one up? Like... No, I don't want to go. And she's like, you have to come or they're not going to. I'm like, fine. So I showed up in a Wu-Tang Clan sweatshirt <laughs> and a baseball hat. After baptism. Yeah. And uh, I'm standing there like this when the priest is like, and now you are. And, and then Jesus said, I go, no, he didn't. And he's like, and everyone's looking at me. And, and then they go, you please make a cross, sign of the cross on your daughter's head. So everyone, my, you know, my ex-wife has to do it, her parents. And then I, and I go. Yeah. You do your I just like this one. Yeah. <laughs> and the priest goes goes like this. Okay. 
You know, if you want to kick her out of the school, I have no problem with it. <laughs> Bro. So, yeah, you know, that's where I was at. Anyway. So, eighth grade. Now you're going grade. to high school. Is this public yeah, so school? So, eighth grade. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I was supposed to go Catholic school. I didn't want to because I didn't want to wear a uniform because I'd already started break dancing and I wanted to be cool. So, cut to. It's 1984 now. Yeah. I'm already break dancing for about break a year dancing. and a half already. What do you mean? Like on a team or competing? I was in the just, streets you know, I was shit, into hip hop. I was already, I'm on a B boy. I would walk to school with my boom box. You would? You yeah, carry the every box? Every fucking day I would do it. And I was a little kid. To? I was listening to Grandmaster Flash and the Furious yeah, Five on that. Yeah. And then my brother would end up with like these mixtapes and I'd play those too. But anyway, I'm playing all this shit, walking to school, blasting it. And then I'd walk by the French teacher with, <laughs> and I'd play that part. Juma Pill, Melly Mel. Don't <laughs> want a lot of cheap mademoiselles. And I was like. <laughs> so you cut to. Uh, 1984, summer, uh, you know, uh, September 1984, you start. I start ninth grade. I'll show you what I look like. <laughs> um, I was born in, uh, my birthday's in September, so I was already in school, but this is a picture from me on my birthday in 1984. I'm turning 14. That's what I look like at 14. <laughs> That's, Hold so. on a fucking minute. <laughs> 1984, kids. 1984. I begged my. That is bad, eh? Dude, you look like fucking out of tur- you look like uh breaking. You look like yeah. you're out of breaking. Well, like that's turbo. the problem. I, yeah, I ended up I saw breaking before I saw Beat Street. And when I saw Beat Street, I go, yo, that's the fucking cool look. Yeah, Beat Street. But I didn't know where to street. get that. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So I was like mixing it with Karate Kid and fucking breaking and and I begged my dad for that thriller jacket. It was ninety nine dollars and it was leather and it was fucking and ninety nine dollars in nineteen eighty four is a lot Fuck, of fucking money. Yeah. I wore that jacket once or twice. Got made fun of and never wore it again. <laughs> and I, to this day, to this day, to this day, um, 37 years later, I still feel bad that I wasted my dad's money on that <laughs> fucking jacket. And that's, that's fucking guilt right there. That is guilt. <laughs> that is Because he didn't have $100. It's a lot of fucking money and he bought it for me. And I didn't oh, think he would buy it for shit. me. I should have got the beaded jacket. Now the beaded jacket was a little too out there, but the yeah, thriller that jacket was way out there. I had my, I, it's so funny you say that, man, because I was not a fan of Michael Jackson the clothes he wore. I just wasn't. I'm I don't know. Maybe I was. Yeah, but on, you're younger than me. I figured it. Yeah, you know, but I just knew that it was weird. Okay, Ch- chimpanzees and kids and shit. And I'm thinking about the Catholic Church. I'm like, well, how's this guy any different? So. My grandmother, I'll never forget. And again, she didn't have me either, but she bought me this pair of black parachute pants. Oh, yeah. And I mean, zippers all over the Oh, yeah, I had those. That's what I'm wearing in that picture, actually. I'm wearing black baggy pants with a zip down the side with white mesh. (laughs) So you can zip it up or you can zip it down. (laughs) But I would always have it down because I want you to see my white mesh. I hung those motherfuckers up in the closet and never, ever wore them. And I still, to this day, I feel bad about that. It was like that Christmas present. She thought it was cool. She went out and got me these things. And I was like, yeah, fuck this shit. I got my chucks and my jeans. I'm good. No, I had my karate slippers on because they were good for sliding around. The Bruce Lee ones, the little black ones. Yeah, yeah, with the plastic sole. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah, because they were like five bucks. What was your like go-to move? What was the one where people, you would do it, and people were like, oh, this guy knows what he's doing. I used to do this one shuffle, um, but I had to stop because my knee started to swell up. Because <laughs> I was trying to do this really fast shuffle on the ground, and I ended up doing this thing where I, I kept turning like this and smashing my knee, mm-hmm. but it looked really cool. But I'd go in a circle and pap, 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 pap. And then one day my knee just was like this. And I was like, oh, I don't think I could do that anymore. And then I remember one time doing a dive. Into a worm or something? Yeah, I was going to do a dive. So I went and did the dive, but instead of sliding down like this, I got stuck and I scorpioned. Oh, I legs like, all ah! And I thought I was going to fucking never walk again. So I started to become a little bit more cautious with my B-boy moves. <laughs> and ben- eventually I learned how to windmill, but it was too late then. That's some real shit, the windmill, yeah. rolling on your shoulders like oh, that. Oh, yeah, and, and I was doing seat belts and, and these and... The seatbelts in these were easier to do than the actual keep doing it this way. Tell me the truth. When you're walking through the house or whatever, and you're just by yourself, you ever bust out a pop and lock? You still bust? Oh, yeah. It's funny. when uh, I have videos. There's videos out there of me, like, even a few months ago. Um, some kid was at my house, and he said he's a he's a B-boy. And I go, all right. So he did some shit, and then I stood up, and I did my little – I top rocked. And I top rock still looks good, so it looks like I'm about to do something, but I wasn't going to do it. <laughs> You're like, I saw, man. Yeah, like, oh, she's gonna dive into a windmill. I go, nah, nah, I don't want to do it right now, because I don't want to fucking break my hip, my head, or my knee. Yeah. Oh shit! 
Now, are you playing sports or no, anything like no. that in high school? So, you see, I was a very small kid. Mm -hmm. I was four yeah, you are small. I was, how tall are you now? 5'11". Yeah, you're, you're... I'm about 215, 215. You don't... Yeah. I, I, I was going to say, I wondered if you were always... Because you got some size to you, and I would imagine yeah. people didn't want to fuck with you then, but you were a little. I huh? was 4'11", and I weighed 75 pounds. In ninth and I, grade? Yeah, and I dressed like that. Yeah, So understand were. what I'm working with. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm already just... dealing with... Being Indian in 1984, and like nobody wanted to talk. To You're it, like, how can I make this worse? I was trying to figure out how to get a Jerry curl. I wanted a Jerry curl so bad. That's gonna be the photo for all this all, episode. Man, all the black dudes had Jerry curls, the really good ones, and they'd That's all be like this. Yo, check it out, and they go like this. They go like this. We're just gonna to give you that just to see their curls move. Yeah. Like, Look. That's how they knew they got a good one. They're like, Ch -ch 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 -ch. yeah. It makes me laugh. What Deion Sanders always said: "Look wet, but it was dry." He oh, yeah. said it all the time. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, so. Well, that was the old gangster look and everything with uh, NWA with the Jerry Curl. Oh, that was way too late. That was way too late. This is eighty four. This is pre. This is pre NWA. How That's, how pre though? Eighty. It was about five, four years. Yeah, four or five years before them. Eighty nine. Yeah. Yeah. So. The um, Jerry Curl. Yeah. So I, I go to this. Did you trip. try to actually get one? No, my mom wouldn't let me grow my hair. <laughs> I did. I'll tell you a funny story about eleventh grade. Um. Anyway, so ninth grade. And I'm getting picked on even worse now in this school. A lot of bullying. A lot of bullying. And again, race related. Race yeah. related, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and because I look like that. And, and I kind of had a slick tongue on me, too. If you but said something, I was like, I'll say something bad. Did you have a small crew at all that also looked like that that you could at least come back and be, man, they're fucking No, all my, all my friends went to the other schools. Okay. They were still at the. They went to Catholic other, they went, other No, high no, schools. they just wherever. They went wherever else, but I didn't really. Like there was jocks in this school. There was guys that played basketball. There was guys that played football. And I, so to this day, I still fucking can't stand team sports. Okay. Like, what's your team? I go, to my team is go fuck yourself. That's my team. <laughs> you ever heard of them? <laughs> they go fuck yourselves? They're really Speaking good. of teams, I want to say this real quick, because this is just a shout out to you and it's on my mind. I'm sorry, it's a complete sidetrack. Mm -hmm. But every time someone talks to me about you and I talk to them I talk about how you sold out the Raptors arena. Seven times. Seven times. And guess who can't do that? The Raptors. Back then, they could not fucking do <laughs> no, that Now either. they can. Now, now they all. can, but not back then. <laughs> yeah, that's no, true. no. That's fucking beyond incredible. It's pretty cool. So my, good for you for fucking doing something a sports team couldn't. Look at that. You just, well, there you go. And then they won the world championship. They did. So. They, they finally got it. Yeah, finally. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy about that. I'm happy yeah. about that. Let's take a quick break and tell you about our first sponsor, Liquid IV. When we push our body hard or we're just feeling run down, it's extremely important to take care of ourselves with the proper vitamins and nutrients. That's why Liquid IV created Hydration Multiplier plus immune support to maintain and strengthen your immune system. I've told you guys throughout the entire time I had COVID and even still, I'm Liquid IV in it all day long. It had vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc. It's so good for you, so good for your system. Hydration Multiplier plus immune support is a cutting edge blend of vitamin C, zinc, and Wellmune in convenient single serving packets to help strengthen your immune system. Zinc, the second most abundant trace mineral in your body, supports immune cell health and function. Each packet is bursting with fresh, natural tangerine flavor. It tastes so good. This one's my favorite. Liquid IV can provide two to three times more hydration than water alone. It's the perfect balance to help you strengthen your immune system more quickly and effectively. And with every purchase, Liquid IV donates a serving of Liquid IV to someone in need. Liquid IV has donated four plus million servings in response to COVID-19. Products are being donated to hospitals, first responders, food banks, veterans, and active military. Get your Liquid IV's hydration multiplier plus immune support in bulk at Costco or order online and get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code HONEYDEW at checkout. That's 25% off of any Anything you order when you get better hydration today using promo code HONEYDEW at liquidiv.com. Our next sponsor is Keeps. Now, the guys here at the studio are using Keeps. They're keeping that hair. You know, they're young. They're not like me with a full head of beautiful hair. They're young and losing their hair already. So they're using this product, and Keeps works, man. Keeps offers a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair. Two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they are 35. More than 50 million men in the U.S. suffer from male pattern baldness. Convenient virtual doctor consultation and medications delivered straight to your door every three months so you don't have to leave your home. It's low cost. The treatments start at just 
10 bucks a month and keeps offers generic versions. They have discreet packaging and proven results. Keep says more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. Prevention is key. Treatments can take four to six months to see results, so act fast. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash honeydew to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps.com slash honeydew. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash honeydew to get your first month free. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash honeydew. Now, let's get back to the do. Anyway, so, you know, this school, ninth grade, I'm getting bullied a lot. I'm getting picked on a lot. Dealing with a lot of racism. Uh, I like girls. Girls don't like me. But then when the girls did like you, they had to, like, because it was only white girls, they wouldn't let you, they wouldn't let anybody know. Mm -hmm. So I used to walk home with this one girl, and we would hold hands, and we would make out and stuff. And then one day somebody saw her with me. and was like, the fuck are you doing with the fucking package? She let go of my hand. I was like, I'm not with him. I don't even know him. And I was like, what the oh. fuck? And then I, that really hurt me and then i like this other girl and i wrote her like these really cute notes you know i think her name was carla hill and i was like i would kill for carla hill and you know stuff like that and she was really cute and she was a she was a she was an elf in the mall and the santa display oh, yeah, you know what i mean yeah, yeah. i was like she was really cute and then uh and then she showed them to like these fucking dickhead guys and they were making fun of me that they were a grade older than me and i was like oh fuck you bitch all right so i see <clears throat> so now i'm like getting all this like oh i see what's going on here and then I left school crying a lot in ninth and 10th grade. So I never got good grades. So in ninth grade, you're supposed to get eight credits. I got two. <laughs> two. I, and then I had to go to summer school. I took two classes. I picked up one. You know what I mean? So I got three. I ended up with three. And then you're supposed to get another eight in 10th grade. And then I got three. And I went to summer school, picked up another one, got four. So I had seven credits at the end of 10th grade when you're supposed to have 16. Yeah. And then the school was like, you need to get out of our school. Really? They yeah. kicked you out? They, they sent me to the trade school down the street because they were like, you're never going to graduate here. Your marks are atrocious. I got 13% in typing. Dude, and none of them are talking to you about what's going on with you. There's no <laughs> counselor cared. that reached out. Yeah. Nobody fucking cared. You got to understand, when, when, I, like, when people talk about America in the 40s and 50s and dealing with racism, I get it. Because there's nobody you can talk to because the people you're going to talk to don't actually give a fuck because they're no matter even if they're not racist, they still don't have any empathy for you. Right. They're like, man. So what are your parents telling you when you go home? Because I'm curious about the parenting back then versus the shit. Because I, I feel like we coddle our kids well, we a do. lot we about, do. you know, hey, this and that. And so what do your parents tell you? Are they my dad, tough it up, defend yourself? Or yeah, what, tough what it up, of, yeah. you know, defend yourself. My dad is a was a little guy and he had a bad temper. And he used to box in India. So he was like, he would fucking. Your like, dad's he, boxing, you're beatboxing. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> And he and he he would tell me like just fucking hit him, and I'm like I don't know how to hit him. My dad was like you, you need to learn how to fight. So right before when I changed schools, the school I was going to was like a tough school, mm -hmm. like a lot of tough kids, a lot of badass kids went there. Um, and my dad was like, if you're going to that school, you might want to learn how to fight. So this kid that I hung he around told with, you that oh yeah huh? okay this kid that I used to hang around with was a Canadian champ boxer, Willie. He was like go to the gym with Willie. I was like, all right. And I ended up starting boxing, and I fucking loved it. And I was actually pretty decent at it. Turns out, I was like, I didn't know. I didn't know I had to. I, he goes, you, yeah, of course you fucking do it. My dad's just like, of course. I'm, I'm good at it. If I'm good at oh, it, you're my yeah. kid. You're all going to be good at it. <laughs> and because my brother was six years older, so you got to understand, when I started, I'm like 15 and a half, 16. You know, my brother's 21 or 22. He doesn't. Mm -hmm. he's, and my brother was a big guy. He used to read all his bodybuilding books and worked out and stuff. So he was, but it was like the eighties workout where you weren't like jacked. You were like just swollen, yeah. but like that creatine puff. Yeah. yeah like just kind of weed or like shit. chubby, but with <laughs> yeah. like everything sitting in the right <laughs> place. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You didn't have like a jawline. You're still like, <laughs> yeah. you know, but like, you know, big guys. So people, and, are, and you're now 16. So how much have you grown? Are you still like, no, a, I'd grown now. So now I'm 147 pounds. Well, holy shit. You put on fucking doubled your weight. Almost. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I got, I had a growth spurt and like, uh, End of ninth grade, beginning of tenth grade, okay. I had a growth spurt, and uh, but it didn't make a difference because I was still skinny. You know what I mean? So um, I start boxing, I get good at it. I go to the tough school. No, not one fucking problem in the tough school. 
No. Not one. Because the tough kids, the little gangsters in that school, they're not punks. They're not bullies. The bullies were at the other school. They were wow. being dicks and bullying because they could. And what the are you going to do? The, the kids that the kids at your school would go kick the shit out of those kids. Yeah, they would never yeah. push them. Yeah, around. they would never come. That that school right. would never come to this school and right. start a problem because they would get their ass whooped. Right. But my school was all the tough kids, and it was mostly Jamaican kids and and uh, and like crazy ass white trash kids. You know what I mean? And and what sort of trades? What are they teaching? I, you at I the took trade chef school? training for two years. You took you did? Yeah. So across I from, wish I knew that was. I always in my mind when they talked about Votech, it was always I always. They never said anything about horticulture or shit. Oh, we had a horticulture class. Cars and, and mechanic shit, yeah. you know. Yeah, they had all that there too. They had auto body, machine they had mechanic shop, shops. they had machine shop. Yeah. They had that was in a different section of the school. Right where next to the chef training class was the bake shop class. They baking. had baking? God, yeah. I did it. And then all across wrong. a hall from us was the uh, cosmetology class where you learn about hair and makeup the, and the all fast that stuff. Girls. Yeah, yeah. Easy and then girls. and then next door to them was the sewing class. And I used to hang out in the sewing class all the time because the teacher, Miss Kelly, uh, rest in peace, she passed away like a few few months ago. But she used to, she was cool as shit. She would let me hang out in there because she was like a hippie. And she had, um, she had married a black guy in like the 60s. So she was like hip as shit. And she was like, I don't, and she would swear, I don't give a fuck. You want to hang out here? Go ahead and hang out here. She goes, you're not going to be a chef anyway. Right? <laughs> She's like, I know there's something better for you, Russell. I know she was one of those people who believed in me. I was going to ask you if you had someone. And she was that. She was that one. She was the one. She would let me hang out. And there was lots of, all, the, all the hot chicks. Well, not hot chicks, but the the cool girls were in that class. And I was like, there was some cute ones in there. I was like, all right, I got to hang around these chicks. And they and this is a different school. This is a different a different way of approaching things. So these ki- these girls are being nice to me now. Mm-hmm. And you're not the packy kid no more. You're just another guy in the school. You're like, wow, this is great. So. I go there. I, I take chef training. Me and my chef training teacher to this day are still friends. He's st- he still, really? he still emails me, calls Hell me, texts yeah. me. Mr. Kohler, good guy. He ended up fucking fucking one of the students and marrying her later on. No. <laughs> Sorry, Freddie. Um, he did. He was fucking one of the students. He ended up marrying her. And then she, you know, jacked him and took him for a shit. But whatever. I mean, you know. <laughs> jacked him and took him for a shit. Oh, my God. And then that school, it was funny because the kids were like so, you couldn't play with those kids. Like, I'd never seen that in the other school because I, I understand. What underst- do you mean by that? Like, you like couldn't I fuck underst- around with them or? Yeah, no, like, well, I could, but like, when the teachers, like in the other school, it'd be like, it'd be like, uh, you know, you'd be like, Ryan, go to the office. I'm like, sorry, sir, I'm going to the office. And this school, you'd be like, go to the office. Go fuck yourself. You know, I mean, that's what it was like in my school. Right. And it was like, the teacher would be like, breaking up a fight. And then, uh, and then the, the girls would turn on the teacher. Don't fucking touch me. And then start slugging on the teacher. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? So I got to see this. I'm like, I was like, oh, this is a different. That changed my whole thing. I was like, oh, I don't have to get bullied. These aren't fucking bullies. This is what, this is what real tough people do. And so it changed me altogether there. Okay. I remember this one fight. This guy, this guy Eddie, got into a fight with this uh, Italian guy named Massimo. And Eddie had like a white, you know, everybody used to carry a rag in their pocket mm-hmm. back then. He had a towel in his pocket. So they start fighting, and then <laughs> Eddie takes a towel out of his pocket, throws it up in the air, and goes, and then Massimo looks and goes, and <laughs> he goes, <laughs> that's old. That's our old snowball yeah, fight trick. Fucking... You throw one up, somebody looks at you, just boom, yeah, right yeah. in the fucking mouth. Yeah. And I was, I remember laughing so hard that fucking day too. <laughs> that's a great one. Yeah. Yeah. So I never got beat up ever again after that when I changed schools. <clears throat> Isn't that interesting? <laughs> yeah, it is. I started boxing. Maybe that's why. Yeah. But have you ever been in a fight? Oh yeah. Yeah. I've been in a lot of fights after that. Yeah. Once I learned how to fight, I was like, oh, I'm gonna do this. Yeah. So I got into. It. I used to. I wouldn't instigate them, but if something popped off, I'd be like. Let's go. I mean, what's it like? I, look, I've been in a shitload of fights, and I know what it's like for a person to want to take me off the face of this earth who's a stranger, has never met me, doesn't know a damn thing about mm-hmm. me. But what is that like for to face because of just the color of your skin? I, I'm sure I did something or whatever to them. It mm-hmm. wasn't because I'm white. Right. So what is that like to have to fucking literally fight for your life? Well, well, you're not fighting for your life. I already knew how to fight. So they would talk slick and I'd knock them out. It was literally one punch. Always one punch. Oh, you would cry. It was like, pop. That's it? All right. And I wasn't like a stomp you and beat them. I was like, eh, he's already asleep. The fuck am I going to do with that? So it was always it was always very quick. So I never had a problem with that. It was never like got into a knockdown drag out. Nobody knew how to fight. 
You realize that once you learn how to fight, is that you go, nobody knows how to fucking that, fight. That's right. Except today, you never know. Mike, now, one of these MMA motherfuckers will snap yeah. your neck off. I like, do jujitsu now. So yeah. now I'm always like, and jujitsu guys, there's like this brotherhood in jujitsu. When you see somebody does jujitsu, it could be the guy that hates your guts. You're like, hey, hey, oh, you just, oh, okay, yeah, okay, cool. What's up, bro? You know, it's like this whole thing that changes, you know? It's a quite a lovely thing. It sounds like it. But anyway, so. I graduate. I ended up becoming president of that high school in twelfth grade. What do you mean? You ran. I ran for class Come president. On, I won you, president. You did. Yeah. How, how hard? How hard was it? I was the only one who could make a fucking <laughs> sentence. Everybody but was dumb as shit in that school. If everybody hated you, not how, in the second school. Oh, the second the second school. Second school so you I was were popular. Welcome. Okay. I became right. popular because I was DJing and stuff then too already. What you, where were you DJing? I started DJing in '85. Um, Damn, like, that is early. You were yeah. you were records, huh? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. My first two doubles that I intentionally bought were the show Dougie Fresh and Slick yeah. Rick. Yeah. So I, I bought those. I bought two of those because I intentionally bought it so I could scratch. Get fresh crew. And then my first two turntables were these Techniques SLB two hundreds. They were belt drive. So and the pitch was a wheel. There was no like up and down pitch. It was a wheel. So Damn. yeah, if you wanted to pitch up the record, you had to push through with your finger. And then they would do it at this ungodly speed. <laughs> So you, you'd have to learn how to do it with your finger so you could just mix that way. But then when you did do that, you'd stretch the belt. The belt would fall off the turntable. Your turntable would die. And then you'd have, and then I'd go to pick up my mom from work with my dad to seemingly like I wanted to go for the drive. But I would go to the where they sold turntables, lift off the platter, steal the fucking <laughs> belt, and put the platter back down. <laughs> I love that shit. Um, so that made you a cool kid pretty much popular yeah because now and, I, I knew music and I okay. had the new music and I knew how to get music and I became that guy and I would so I, I started having an identity now okay I was the hip hop kid mm -hmm. I play I DJed I used to break dance I like tagging a little bit you know what I mean so uh, and these tough kids in that school were all, all about it they were like oh, they had no problem with me because they were like man we, he's not fucking with us we're not fucking you know he's He's cool. He's all says hi, you know, gives us you know, whatever. But so. did you run with any crews or were you sort of your own guy? I was kind of my own guy. I had like my best friend Marlon that I grew up with, Stacko the Big Black Wacko. Um, that's why I was actually FaceTiming with him when I pulled in, as a matter of fact. We've been best friends for 43 years. I love that. I'm still really tight with guys from like sixth grade, seventh yep. grade. 43 years we've been best friends there. So uh, he's, he's a black dude, Jamaican as well. And then uh, everybody I knew was black after that. It was just like, it was just so much easier. I never had any problems with them, you know what I mean? So I was like, oh, this is way better. This is so, it's so, 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 no problems here. This is the best way to be. So, right. um, you gra I graduated in 88. I was class president. Um, I remember there was somebody running for office in my town and their name was like something like, it was like Ken Russell or something. And I stole his signs and blacked out the Ken part and put the Russell, Russell. ones on. <laughs> I put Russell all over the school. Vote for Russell. Yeah. And then I don't know which, which I heard some political candidates say this on the news. So when we had to go from class to class to pitch ourselves to the students, I was like, vote for me. If I win, you win. <laughs> That's it. That's yeah. it. Thank you. And then the other one's like, uh, you know, they couldn't form a sentence. And if I win, I'm going to. And I'm like, eh, yeah, I'm going to do shit. And then uh, I came up with, like these designs for the new school T-shirts. And I had it done graffiti style, so because mm -hmm. you know I was a hip hop minded kind of kid, so it looked pretty cool. Um, anyway, that's high school, and then I graduate, and then uh, I don't you go know, to college. No, no. You, from so from the high school I graduated from, you weren't eligible to go to college. Nah, because uh, back like your then tech, your text no, grades so, don't count. No, so in Canada they had a system back then. It was there was three one four one and five one. Three one is basic level education, four one is general, and five one is advanced. And I, uh, the school I went to, offered nothing but basic. And you weren't two one, three, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. And I'm no joke. One of the fucking English problems in eleventh uh, or twelfth grade was unscramble the words and use them in a sentence. And one of the words was Ferrari, and I go, Miss, this is a. It's I'm not gonna a, own three of these. I, no, I said <laughs> this isn't a word; it's a name. And I got kicked out for challenging everything all the time. <laughs> you know, yeah. But you are right. Yeah. I'm it's really, not I'm, a word. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was so scared of my parents. I remember I got in one some trouble with one of the teachers and I got sent to the office and the principal was going to um, call my parents. And then I got so fucking freaked out. But I was like, 
And I was like, you have no one to fucking like in my house. All right, motherfucker. I was like getting freaking out. I go, and he was a big older white man. I go, why don't you do this? Why don't you come to the boxing gym with me? We'll spar three rounds. If you beat me up, you can call my fucking parents. And I'm like, come on, motherfucker. Let's go. I'll fucking fight you to stop you from calling my parents. And he was like, this kid's crazy. <laughs> he ended up letting me do an in-school suspension because he was going to suspend me for a couple of days. So what do you do after high school? Um, I get this job working with my cousin. He was a subcontractor for like the gas company and we had to go house to house and put these rain shields on gas meters. Okay. So I literally walked around and just put that plastic put cover this plastic on cover it. on these rain shields uh, on, on on gas meters for the whole summer of 88. And then I got a job in a warehouse after that because that's the, what my life was doing. I was like And at uh, this point there's no comedy in your life or anything. Comedy starts a year later. Okay, but what's the what what's your influence? I know you at this point. I'm sure you're watching comedies. You well, have well, some favorites. Well, you gotta understand, '88. You're still not really watching it. You're listening to it. True. So true. I'm listening to records. I had all these Carlin records, but no SNL or anything well, like that. I didn't really care about it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was you had to be home to watch that on a Saturday night. And I'm 18 years old. I'm trying to go to the clubs. I'm going to all the all these all ages clubs. Start going to all ages clubs oh, at you 15. Guys Oh, really? Up yeah. there is that early? Yeah, 15 all ages clubs. You can go there. There's no, there's no alcohol. Oh, so. no shit. Okay. Club 404, you know, we'd go there. Club 404. That was a fun times. Uh, then there was all these like other little all ages clubs. And then, you know, uh, the nightclubs in Toronto, they used to serve alcohol till one back in the 80s. And then after one, they would open it up to all ages. Oh, okay. So you go to like a nightclub. There's this after hours club called Twilight Zone that everybody used to go to. And uh, it was in downtown Toronto, and they used to just play house music. And this is when house music was underground still. So I would go there all the time. I remember going there in 85. I was 15, and I would go after one. And I remember falling asleep in the club because I couldn't stay up. <laughs> and Because uh, it would be house. Like, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah. And I fell asleep sitting there. And then they put on Wop It by B-Fats. Remember? Mm -hmm. It was a Wop It. It was a song by B-Fats, Wop It. And I remember sleeping, and then I hear Wop It. And I go, and I got up and started doing the Wop. And then I went back to sleep. <laughs> And um, and also back then I would see Lennox Lewis because I was boxing amateur, mm. and I, I would go to the tournaments. Now let me just clear something up because I never actually had any fights. I would go to the gym, fight, spar with guys, get ready for fights, get guys ready for fights, and then my coach would be like, "We were fight. I got you a fight in two weeks." I'm like, and I wouldn't show up for three weeks because I was like, I don't want to fight. I just wanted to train, learn how to fight. Mm -hmm. And I didn't mind like getting into a scrap. But, like you and I know each other. We're sparring. I, I'm good with that. And you want to beat the shit out of me? That's fine too. You ever get knocked out like that? Uh, I got. Uh, I, I've been knocked down a couple of times. Yeah. Not out cold, but definitely knocked down. When? What's it like? Um, slowly do this. <laughs> you have that headgear on. Do you have it? Like just and then like you hear you can slowly hear the sound. Yeah, going away, <laughs> fading out. Yeah, that's that's what it's like. <laughs> it's like being a vacuum. <laughs> And you're just done. And uh, oh, body shots are worse. Uh, fucking worse. Yeah, I, well, I mean, I've seen guys get it, and they just oh, they just go. I, I used like, to. Nah. I, there was this guy, Larry, in my gym, big Jamaican guy, heavyweight. And uh, I started at 147. I think I might have been 160 by this time. And his sparring didn't show up that day, so my coach is like, "Russell, go spar with Larry. Larry's 220, 225, maybe." Damn. He's like six three. I'm. I think I'm five ten at the time. Five nine. Five five nine. Probably five nine. Five ten. Um. They go, Russell Spar with Larry. I go, fuck that. I make too much fun of Larry every day in the gym to get in the ring with this guy <laughs> because I make fun of him because he was very Jamaican. And, oh, Russell, look home there. Oh, 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 oh boy, and I talk so much fucking shit to me. And I'm like, I, I make fun of him. Like, I make fun of his English or whatever. But that's just, and and he would, he had this huge, not the, he had a huge dick. And he would always walk around the dressing room with his dick hanging out. And I'm talking, this motherfucker's shit was this. And I'm, and Listen, go, those dudes yeah. love and I, the and, and I'd be like, I'd be like, I finished training. He goes, oh, come in, never shower. I go, because I'll shower at home. I don't fucking need you to see my peanut with that, yeah, with that fucking real. elephant trunk. It's going to take nine it. of my dicks. Yeah, yeah. He'd be like, yeah. Yeah. It's so, yeah. His dick could have been his sparring partner. You know what I mean? Like just da, 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 yeah so i'd make fun of him all the time <laughs> anyway his sparring didn't show up so my coach is like hey go spar with larry i go fuck that larry go, no i go i'm not getting hit by heavyweight you crazy he goes he's not gonna hit you he's gonna work on defense and i go so i can hit him he's not gonna hit me right I go, all right so i get in put my head gear on mouthpiece everything get in the ring ding ding i start lighting him up because i'm faster than him i'm like pop pop 
pop, 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 pop. And I start talking shit. Hey, Larry, you're really fucking slow. Pop, pop, pop. He's, you know, moving. He's just getting out of the way. He's not getting hurt by me or anything, but I'm I'm getting confident because I'm hitting him, I'm lighting him up. I'm hitting his body. I'm getting his I'm getting his head lightly. You know what I mean? I'm I'm getting things on him. And then I'm and I start, I mean, I'm talking so much shit. I gets to him. <laughs> so I throw a jab. He dips, pop, right under, hits me right in the liver. I'm like, Hi! Yeah, it's him. I dropped and I made this noise. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> And my coach is like, get up. I go, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you, bro. <laughs> my liver's up. holding me down. Yeah. I'm not getting up. I've out. heard those thuds. That thud. I always. Pump. You just when see people, them bend when, and go, nah, You know, guys God, like yeah. to fake. And I always go right there on them. Because they're always going for the head. And I'm like, yeah. pop. You know, you know how fucking sensitive that is? Yeah. It's the. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's so. Oh, God damn. And I give it a light tap just to let you know you're, you're right open. Oh, what the mm. fuck was that? And I go, your body. You're going to piss blood <laughs> tomorrow, but you'll be fine after that. Oh, yeah. Well, we just have go- good times going to the tournaments, though, because my coach understood after a couple of times. He set up fights, and I didn't go. He was like, all right, this fucking guy just wants to train. And uh, so he would let me do all that. And then we'd go to tournaments, and I would see Lennox Lewis because he was at a different gym in a different city. And I just knew him as a tall, skinny guy. I would just, you know, periodically see him. And then in 88, Lennox won the gold, gold medal for the Canada in the Olympics. And I remember being at Twilight Zone. <laughs> And I saw Lennox. He had just come back from the Olympics. I was like, hey, congrats, Len. He was like, hey, good to see you. Thanks, man. And, then, and subsequently, him and I became very good friends over the years. Oh, that's great. Um, to this day, we're still very close. And um, I'll show you something really cool that he sent me in September. Uh, he was doing, I don't know why, I first, I don't know why he sent this to me. He sends me this video of him, right? And he's talking about him and I growing up together. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. But why'd you send me this fucking video? So... He's doing this video about talking about people that grew up around him, and he's talking about Russell Peters, and and he's wearing this suit. And uh, people that used to follow me go to some of my fights, and uh, lived where I lived in Toronto was a famous Russell Peters, and he's a great comedian. My friend, I used to buy mixtapes off him. I did. I used to sell mixtapes. The ones you're talking. Uh, look at the inside of that suit. Oh, fuck yeah. So, he lined the jacket. The lining of the jacket is the picture of the me and him. of you and him. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, so, yeah. And he didn't tell you that? Was it something no. you saw when he released it? Yeah, no, he sent it to me. That's Damn, that, that's dude. the picture in his suit. Wow. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, so it's pretty wild that, uh, you know, you grew up with these kinds of people. And then you think about the people that grew up around, I think about the people that grew up in my neighborhood, like people go, fuck is Brampton for? I mean, like Brampton came up with some, we had some good people come out of Brampton. Scott Thompson from uh, uh, Kids, Kids in the, the Hall. Hall. Uh, Michael Cera, mm-hmm. Brampton. Um, the director, Little X. Okay. He did all he does all of Drake's videos now, but he yeah. did like all the cool videos in the nineties. They did like Red Man and he did Sean Paul videos. Okay. He's done all kinds of great videos. You and Lennox? Uh, me and Lennox. Damn. Uh, <clears throat> um there's a uh, that kid uh uh he's a rapper now. Tory Tory Lanes is from Brampton. Mm-hmm. Uh Tristan Thompson is from Brampton. Okay. Uh there's a lot of people from my city. And you'll yeah. notice most of them are black. Like you said. Except for Scott and Michael. Yeah. So comedy starts a year later for you. Comedy starts a year later. Um, we were we were going to this nightclub one time. This must have been, this was in the summer of 89. I hadn't turned 19 yet. You had to be 19 to get in the club. But I never usually got carded because I usually kind of knew somebody. Um, but we went to this club in Brampton. And, of course, they fucking card and I couldn't get in. So we're hanging out in the parking lot of, of this nightclub, and I stand on my friend's bumper of his car, and I start making fun of people. And they're like, oh, you need to do stand-up. You really?" And then my cousin Andrew uh, said something. We were, hang, we were at a family thing, and I started making jokes. and goes, you know, you're really funny. You should really go do stand-up. And when my cousin said it to me, it rang true, because my cousin's never fucking paid me a compliment before. <laughs> yeah, then, yeah. He was like, you, should, you, go, you go to Yuck Yucks and do stand-up. I'm like, Really? And then my parents started giving me pressure. What are you going to do with your life? What are you going to do with your life? You're 19. You're going to be 19. You don't have a fucking career. You're not, no job, nothing. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. My, I told my brother, my brother's like, what do you want to do? And you know, my brother's 25 at the time. And I'm like, I don't know. Everyone told me I should do stand-up because once you try 
stand up then. Have you ever seen it live? I go, I have never seen it live. So he took me to like a couple of amateur nights to go watch. And when you watch, when you're, if you've only listened or watched professionals, it's intimidating. But if you go and watch amateurs, you're like, I'm better than that fucking guy. Yes. And that's how I gauged it. So I started watching live shows in September of 89. About a month and a half after I turned 19, I went and did it. And then here we are, 30, here we 32 are. years later. Dude, you're fucking just, I mean, it's funny to me. Sometimes, and this is no disrespect, I, I say Russell Peters, and people are like, Russell Peters. And I'm like, well, he's one of the top three fucking earners on the Forbes list for comedy in the world. And I'm, they're like, huh? And I'm like, he sold out Toronto Raptors. He sold out Madison Square Garden. For seven Garden. times, yeah. Madison Square Garden. He's Barclays one of the biggest comedians. Yeah, yeah. like, huh? O2 Arena, Tom opened for me there. Really? In yeah. that one, yeah. In, in 2010, when I shot my green card tour special, I took mm -hmm. Tom to England with me to open for me. Where is your favorite place to perform? Uh, or one of them. Let's not single know. anyone out. I don't know because people. I really have a good time everywhere. Yeah. Um, Auckland, New Zealand is usually 99% of the time the best show on every tour. I don't know what it is about Auckland, but the audience gets it. And they laugh with you on every fucking joke. They're a good comedy audience. Good, yeah. great comedy great audience. Great comedy audience. I was just texting with uh, <laughs> Israel Adesanya the other night, uh, talking on DMs. And I said, I'm, I'm coming to NZ next year. And he's like, oh, I'm coming. I've got to be there for sure. And I was like, that's pretty fucking cool. That is great. All right. So now that we've talked about what we've talked about, advice to your 16-year-old self. What are you going back and telling Russell at 16? Russell at 16, I'm going to tell him... Um, work harder. That's interesting. Focus more. Um, On what? Everything that you're doing. Okay. Whatever you're doing, focus more. Pay attention more. Um, and don't harbor all that anger that you had. I had a lot of resentment towards a lot of things when I was growing up. And I realized that, you know, I, I went through, <clears throat> I went through a phase of, uh, of fucking a lot of women, doing uh, breaking a lot of women's hearts, doing dirty, and uh, and I would tell him, "Don't do that in the future." And pull out, <laughs> pull out, kid. Never trust a big butt and a smile. Truer words have never been no said. No doubt, that girl is poison. Yes, There's and no I, doubt. and it's funny because I'll always call them. I don't call them uh, Belle Biv DeVoe. I just call them Belle Biv. <laughs> Because um, my uh, current lady used to date Ronnie DeVos. Nah, so. you got to get re We got to drop the D, bro. Go, BB. The only D you're getting is mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking fantastic, dude. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. We got to get you out of Man, here. Thanks for making me come. I yeah. mean, wait a minute. <laughs> Son of a... Please promote everything again. Your podcast, your your website for the tour dates that'll podcast, be... Podcast, Culturally Cancelled with Russell Peters on uh, iHeartRadio. You, know, you download it wherever you get your uh, 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 podcasts from. I, you know you know what's funny is I've done a fuckload of podcasts in my life. Done yours, Segura's, Joe's a bunch of times. Uh, um, but is this I've, your first one that you're doing first yourself? First one that I'm doing myself. Oh, it is. Yeah, Rogan told me at the beginning of... I, was in, I did his podcast in July and he was like, you need to do a podcast. I go, would you be a guest? Because yeah, I'll fucking be a guest. So uh, I think he kind of lit the fire underneath me. Good. And, um, and I don't know. I, I've, I've done so many. I've never actually listened to one. Isn't okay. that funny? Yeah. I've never listened to a podcast in my life. I go to YouTube and watch clips of people's podcasts, right. but I've never actually sat and listened to one. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. Do what you want to do with it. That's the right. beauty of podcasting. Yeah. Is don't take anyone's fucking notes. Yeah. And do exactly what you think is yeah, best. It's exactly what mine is. Mine is just hanging out. Listen to me. This right here, and I know you and I are on different fucking levels, but I will tell you I this. I don't look at anybody as a different level. Well, I do, because I'm looking up, motherfucker. Right. And this may be the only thing we get to do in our careers that doesn't have someone weighing in somehow on it. This, I'm pretty sure there will be eventually. This, <laughs> depending on who, <laughs> the who, 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 you, who distributes yours. But Where's it doesn't yours? have to. I'm solo. I'm not with a network. That's but it doesn't the, have to That's probably the way to do it. Uh, well, look, man. But look I at was, this. You're solo and you have a studio with logos and signs and pictures. I'm in my backyard. You, but you can be. Right. Look, Tom, And mine is only audio. 
Well, you got to have video, bro. I we'll, know. We'll set you up. You got to have I that. need to do that. I need to get better on that. All right. Well, yeah. Tom's the guy. Tom Segura is the guy that brought me in the YMH and then set me out. And, you know, I, I say all the time, you don't get the opportunity from a comedian and a friend like Tom and then throw up a shower curtain behind you. So, I mean. But you have the opportunity. If that's your podcast. <laughs> Hey, content's content, bro. <laughs> Thank you all, uh, as always, for your support. Uh, make sure you sign up on that YouTube channel. As always, Ryan. You have a Sickler. Patreon channel? I do have a Patreon. It's oh, called the Honey Do With Y'all. That's why I was nice. And his OnlyFans is coming up, guys. I will so, have an OnlyFans eventually. Yeah. Because yeah. the older it gets, the bigger his balls get, they will look like honeydews. <laughs> I'll show them enough. to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as always, Ryan Sickler on all social media, RyanSickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week.